Imagine you're in the hall, you're in the lobby of a hotel room, and a man walks in. His face is flushed, and he's coughing profusely. This is the beginning of an epidemic. Hello, my name is Nyla Griffith, and today I will be educating you about severe acute respiratory syndrome, most commonly known as SARS. Today we will be going over the introduction, the history, the epidemiology, the symptoms, the complications, the treatments, transmission, the testing, social effects, the methods of prevention, the mortality rates, my experiment, future research, and my conclusion. Severe acute respiratory syndrome is most commonly known as SARS. It is a respiratory illness that is caused by the SARS coronavirus. The virus replicates in both lungs and causes both severe and acute symptoms. The first, SARS was the first epidemic of the 21st century. The epidemic happened in Asia and more in southern China. It lasted from November 2002 until July 2003. 349 people died in China, 299 in Hong Kong, 44 in Canada, 37 in Taiwan, and 33 people died in Singapore. <coughs> During the epidemic, SARS was isolated in China, and the physician that started the epidemic traveled to the Guangdong Ch province in China, where he checked into a, into a hotel and he infected 10 other guests. And from there, the 10 other guests spread, spread the disease and started the epidemic. SARS has flu-like symptoms. For example, chills, fever, muscle aches and pains, and diarrhea. And s seven to 10 days after contracting SARS, you develop fever, dry cough, shortness of breath, and most people, after they contract SARS, get pneumonia. After, when you get pneumonia, there are complications, because when you, SARS, since SARS is a respiratory um, disease, illness, you have problems that are so severe that sometimes a mechanical respiratory machine is required to live. So, and people at the highest risk of dying from SARS and contracting it are above the age of 60 and are patients who have hepatitis or diabetes. Most of the fatalities having to do with SARS are caused by respiratory failure or heart and liver failure. SARS is transmitted through close person-to-person -person contact and the transmission mainly occurs in the second week after contracting SARS. Um, SARS is spread through tiny droplets when a person coughs, coughs, sneezes, or even talks. SARS can also be transmitted through fecal, oral, fecal, or fecal droplet. And those two ways of transmission were discovered in the outbreak of Amoy Gardens. There's another type of SARS where you are more contagious than other types, and this is when you're classified as a super spreader. Um, when you're a super spreader, it is due to lack of early implementations of preventative measures due to SARS. And the per uh, people who are super spreaders have higher loads of the SARS coronavirus in their lungs and throat. And they also have larger amounts of secretions from their nose, noses, mouths, or eyes. SARS can be tested using immunofluorescent assays ELISA's and Western blot essays. At the high point for testing where, this, where it is the most positive, <coughs> the most accurate measures of testing are 10, is 10 days after contracting SARS. They use nasal pharyngeal swabs, nasal pharyngeal aspirates, throat swabs, and stool collections to test for SARS. There's no cure or treatment for SARS, and antibiotics and antiviral medication do not work <coughs> to, prevent, to treat SARS. P 
when there is an outbreak or epidemic of SARS, most people wear face masks to prevent, to prevent the SARS virus from entering their nose, mouth, or eyes. And they stay away from people who are, who are known to be infected with the SARS virus, since it's very contagious. This is a picture of a picture called SARS Valet. And this was during an epidemic in China where <coughs> 1,700 people were infected with SARS and 299 people died in Hong Kong. They had to cover their noses and mouths so they would prevent from catching SARS. There are many prevention methods to prevent from catching the virus. And it's important to wash your hands frequently using soap or hot water. It is also important to use at least a 60% alcohol-based rub. It is also important to wear disposable gloves if you are treating or near a person with SARS, because if you're treating them and you get the virus on the gloves, it's important to throw them out so you do not catch the disease and then enter you, your body. And to wear a surgical mask to cover your nose, your mouth, and your eyes. And if you are treating a person with SARS, it's important to wash personal items of the infected person so that you don't catch SARS also. And to use household disinfected, disinfectant to clean off surfaces. SARS has a 15% mortality rate. And 20 to 30% of patients who contract SARS end up in the intensive care unit of hospitals. During the epidemic, in Asia of 2002 and 2003, between the ages of 0 and 24, the mortality rate was 0%. Between the ages of 25 and 44, the mortality rate was 6%. Between 45 and 64, the mortality rate was 15%. And above the age of 65, the mortality rate was 52%. Physicians and scientists do not, understand, do not yet understand why the mortality rate increases as you age, because it is not explained in the SARS coronavirus makeup. In my experiment, there are two parts of the experiment. The scientists were trying to investigate preventative measures for SARS. They use ferrets because ferrets can be intertake can be intratracheally injected with antibodies in their throats and it can they also have high titries of the virus in their lungs. The hypothesis of my experiment was that the administration of a human monoclonal antibody would help prevent would help prevent SARS. And the conclusion was that the prevention, the preventative treatment for SARS with a human monoclonal antibody was a good way to prevent SARS. One of the conclusions was that one intramuscular injection of an antibody would prevent an adult for one to two incubation periods of about four to six days. And that the passive immunizations of an antibody might prevent lung manifestations and stop pharyngeal secretions, which is the contagiousness of the SARS. For future research, scientists are working on treatments in the clinical research, epidemiology, diagnostics, therapeutics, and vaccines. The virus was pretty much eradicated in 2003, but as of 2004, the, doc the patients and scientists were working on treatments and cures for the disease. The experiment, the experiment was one of the main exper experiments used to, um, used to find treatments and cures for SARS. In conclusion, SARS is a respiratory illness that has flu-like symptoms such as chills, fever, cough, sneezing, and other respiratory symptoms. It is transmitted through close person-to-person -person contact using tiny droplets and can be prevented 
<laughs> can you prevent it using good hygiene? And SARS was eradicated in 2003, but doctors were working on treatments and cures in case it was to arise in, in later years. These are my citations. And as William Shakespeare once said, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, SARS was not common in the United States. When they when they were epidemics, they occurred in mainly Asia, and even though they did spread to the five out of seven continents, there were only eight people in the United States that contracted SARS, and that was only because they had traveled to other countries, like in Asia and other places, where SARS was more common. Does that answer your question? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Maya? Um, you said about how the ferrets were injected That's when they um, injected like down their trachea. Okay. Jazz hands, Nyla. Nice.